Video lesson 7.6. So this one's going to deal with uh, the angle bisector theorem. So given this situation, right, we've got a triangle here. And when you have an angle bisector drawn from an angle through the other side, like we have in this particular case here, this line AD would be an angle bisector. So the theorem states that if you have an angle bisector, that intersects the other side of the triangle, right? AKA its opposite side here, so in this case, uh, CB, then it splits the triangle into two proportional triangles. So in other words, right, this, and I'll highlight here, this triangle here would be proportional or similar to this triangle here. Right, and those two triangles are going to be similar to each other. Right? So if they're similar, that means their angles are congruent, their sides are proportional, and we can kind of go down all the characteristics of dealing with similar triangles. Right? So let's look at a first example right, uh, here. So again, in the information, right, we are being told that DG is an angle bisector. So once again, this line right here is an angle bisector. So now I can make the claim that this triangle, we'll call it the yellow triangle, is similar to the blue triangle here. All right, so that's great. All right. And we're also told specific information about the triangle, right? We're told that uh, DF is 6 here, we know that DE is 8, and it also tells me that FG is 3. So that's this one right here. So this is FG, and they're telling me that's 3. And it says find e, uh, EG, which is right here. So I'll highlight that in red, and that makes this our unknown, which I'm going to call X. So again, if I know this, the theorem says it splits into proportional triangles, so that means they're similar. So that means a proportion can be made. So I can make a proportion right, that says the one triangle is proportional to the other. So the best way to do this, in my personal opinion, right, is this is your angle bisector. So these are the two angles that are equal. right? So I always make it, if I look at the yellow triangle, I'm going to say the opposite side. So FG is 3. I'm going to put that over the side that it, that it, uh, in, of the other side of its triangle. So I'm going to say that I have a proportion of 3 to six, right, in those uh, particular sides. And I just need to make sure the format's the same on the other side. So in the blue triangle, opposite the angle that, from the angle bisector, so opposite the angle we have is X, that's our unknown, and the other one is eight, so that's my other corresponding side in the blue triangle. And again, they're set up in the same format. So I did, in this case, I did it across the angle, uh, which is three, next to the angle, which is 6, and across from the corresponding angle uh, next to the corresponding angle. And again, these two angles we know are the same because of the angle bisector. All right. So once I have this, I have my proportion set up. We can just cross multiply and solve. As I've said many times, I like to always start with the variable uh, multiplication when I have my choice. So I would do 6 times x, which is going to be 6x, 3 times 8, all right, so we got 6x is equal to 24. And now I can just simply solve for x by dividing. So x equals 4. So now if x was 4, but x is my eg, so again, to properly answer, therefore eg is 4 units large. So that's your angle bisector. Um, theorem, right? It's, it allows us to make this proportion uh, and allows us a method in order to solve rather than having to go through you know, any other things. It's a nice quick way to do it, especially if you um, have that information that you have an angle bisector. All right, let's try example two here, So, which is a slightly more uh, advanced version. Uh, same thing though, we still know that we have an angle bisector, so, right? So in this particular scenario, right, angle bisector is this line here. But notice in the given information, they give me the three sides of my big triangle, right? So they've got this side here is 8, they've got this side here is 12, 
And then they tell me this entire side BC here is 15. So all of this is 15, all right? So I don't have a particular piece here, right? So in this diagram, they've already labeled it for me. They've labeled one of them X and the other portion Y. So again, where they intersect here with the angle uh, bisector, where the angle bisector intersects the opposite side, it breaks it up into two pieces, all right? And again, they've already labeled. If they don't label it, you can do it for you. So well, if I go to make my proportion here, right? So if I go to set this up, we're going to have one proportion, one fraction equal to another, right? So again, if you follow my thought, we go, these are the two angles that are equal. So across, right, and next to, right? So we've got, in this case, x over 8 equals, I'm going to use my other triangle as proportional or equal to, this triangle again uh, across and adjacent so y over 12. So I go to solve that but now if you want to cross multiply and solve that obviously you're going to have an issue because we're going to have an x times 12 and an 8 times y. I'm going to have two variables so we have to get a little creative here and that's where we're going to use this other side here. So the fact that they tell me here that this whole side is 15 that means that x plus y has to equal 15. So I'm going to rewrite one of them in terms of the other. So it doesn't matter x, get x equals or y equals. It really won't matter. It's your choice. For argument's sake, I'm going to do y equals. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides. And this is what I'm going to get. x is equal to 15 minus x. Oops, uh, that gives me, again, y equals 15 minus, and this is x. So now I can take all of this, I can take all of what y equals, and I can plug it in for this y. And if I do that, so I'm going to rewrite my, my uh, proportion now, and we're going to have x over 8 is equal to 15 minus x instead of y is equal to 12. So now when I replace the y with that 15 minus x, now we have a proportion, but I have uh, the same variable. Now they're on each side, and that's okay. It just makes the algebra a little bit more involved, but at least now I have something I can solve. So I'm going to cross-multiply right, each of these. Uh, it doesn't matter. In this case, we're going to have it on both sides uh, overall. So I'm going to do 12 times x is 12x, and I'm going to have 8 times 15 minus x. All right, so when I go to do this, I have to distribute the 8 to each piece, so I get 12x is equal to 8 times 15, which is, uh, what is that, 120, minus 8 times x, which is 8x. And now I have a regular equation to solve. Again, we want to first get the x's to the same side, so I'm going to add 8x to both sides in this particular situation. That will give me 20x is equal to 120. And now I can divide both sides by 20 to get my x alone. So that gives me x is equal to 6. So there's my x value. Now the question, let's go back and actually answer the question. What is it asking me for? It says find the length of x and y. So, uh, so actually this is one of our answers, x equals 6. And now we're going to go find y. So I'm going to take my equation here that I already said y equals 15 minus x. And I'm just going to plug in the 6 for my x. So now I know that y equals 9. And there's my two answers. And that's how you're going to get that. So again, that angle bisector theorem allows us to create that proportion. And again, no matter how complex the side values are, as long as you can set up the proportion, you can cross multiply and solve. This little uh, situation here, though, uh, is kind of key uh, to notice. Again, you can make this uh, equation up, right, x plus y equals 15, because they told us the entire length of the sides 15, so I can just break this up into really any two variables you want. Again, they use x and y, but again, any two that you want to use. I just wouldn't use letters that correspond with 
uh, any of the letters that are in the picture. Like I wouldn't use A and B in this case uh, because those are points on your triangle, but otherwise you can create them yourself. All right, take a moment. Uh, feel free to go back on look over any part of the video to help you, uh, you know, fix your notes and or go through any of the process.